Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. This is episode two in a series of short, short stories, fiction about work. I'm calling the series at work, and I'm calling this episode Advanced Objections Training. I had met my quota for two quarters in a row, so I got promoted to senior development officer, that's a fundraiser, and was required to attend advanced objections training. You see, most prospects and donors ask few questions, mainly simplistic ones like, can my money go to the Department of Psychology? And they're satisfied with reductionistic but reassuring answers like, yes. So basic objections training is enough. But a few prospects, usually fat cats, ask harder questions, so we get trained on what to say. I thought you might be curious to see the handout they gave us. I'll read it to you. It's titled, Advanced Donor Slash Prospect Objections and Model Answers. The question from the prospective donor, even though Fermat University is private, it gets lots of money from the taxpayer, student aid, research money, overhead. Why do you need my hard-earned money? Your model answer, good question, and use such praise often. We don't get enough from the government. Your money is crucial to supporting quality education, for example, and then insert the donor's hot button from their dossier. For example, maybe first-generation college students. Another question from a prospective donor. If my money goes for a scholarship, that rarely helps a kid go to college. Doesn't it merely substitute my money for the taxpayers or what's already in your coffers, like your billion-dollar endowment? Your model answer? Another good question. Your money usually enables us to offer students cash instead of loan. That is a simplistic answer, but if it's a potential five-figure donor, refer him or her to the assistant director of development. Another possible question from a prospective donor. Studies find that many students grow little, if at all, in areas crucial in a college education. Writing and critical thinking, by the way, just Google academically adrift and you'll find the, that study. It would seem that there are more effective charities than universities. For example, a mentoring program for low-income gifted kids. Your model answer? Of course there are many good causes, but giving to your alma mater does sow the seeds for excellence in launching our graduates' lives, as well as supporting research that can improve lives. Of course, that doesn't address the low probability that the donor's donation will actually fund research that will improve lives. Such research is overwhelmingly funded by NIH, NSF, and so on. Again, if your answer doesn't at least mollify a potential five-figure donor, say you'll get a more detailed answer for them. Another donor question, but isn't your number one mission theoretical research? Four-dimensional mathematical space, the physics of subatomic particles, the thousandth interpretation of James Joyce's Ulysses, the vast majority of which is extremely unlikely to yield practical application. Your model answer? We can't know in advance what will yield practical application. Besides, isn't there beauty in understanding life's basics, the magnificence of everything from literature to a leaf? If that doesn't satisfy the prospect, it usually requires a deep conversation that's beyond what most donors are willing to explore, especially with a fundraiser. Another possible question? When you say you'll match my money, it implies you'll add additional money to match mine. In fact, don't you usually just <coughs> match by listing my money alongside what's already in your coffers? Your model answer. It depends on the situation. If you like, I can check out whether that would apply to your donation. How much were you thinking of giving? If indeed the prospect will only donate if we add funds, we can do that. But most donors don't insist on that. Another donor question. If I earmark money for a specific purpose, say the research on the foundations of cognition, the university knows that few donors check beyond the minimum. How can I guarantee that my donation is used for that purpose? Your model answer? We are an open book. Feel free to check in with any professor. Few do. Even most wealthy people are intimidated by PhDs. And the final part of the handout was uh, a note. It says, NB, note, note bene, note, note carefully. If the donor says, I'll think about it, 
our donor research finds that 77.2% of the time the donor doesn't donate. The good news is that a kindly follow-up call or email from you, and do check the prospect's dossier for which is better, simply asking, just calling to follow up on our good conversation and your great questions. Anything I can answer for you or do for you? 41.3% of the time, it yields an immediate commitment, and within a month, an additional 12% are likely to, to uh, donate. So follow up. Anyway, that fictional story is called Advanced Objections Training. As usual, I uh, welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. And certainly would welcome you taking a look at any of my 30 books. Probably the most um, relevant to this would be either my book Secrets or the book A Dose of Reality. In any event, I do thank you for watching. Uh, uh, yeah, go to Amazon if you want to check out my books. They're all 30 are there. Uh, just search on my name, Marty Nemko, N-E-M-K-O, and you'll find more than you can stomach. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemko.